The Cineware effect is found under the Cinema 4D category, and this is technically an effect in After Effects, but it's really more of a utility or even just a bridge for rendering Cinema 4D scenes in After Effects. But it has some other really great features, so we're going to take a look at it. I can't just apply this to any layer though, or else I'm gonna get an error. It's gonna say there's no Cinema 4D file detected in this project. We either need to add this effect to an imported Cinema 4D file or create a new Cinema 4D file in After Effects. So if I went up to file, new, max on Cinema 4D file, it would make a new file in Cinema 4D, open it up, and then bring it over into After Effects. Now, if you're using Cinema 4D Lite, that's the only way to create a new Cinema 4D file and open up Cinema 4D Lite. I have a subscription to Maxon, so I have a full version of Cinema 4D, so I'm able to bring in any project file that I want and render it with Cineware. To do that, I'm just going to import the project file and drag it to a new comp. Automatically, After Effects is going to add the Cineware effect to the Cinema 4D file, and I can scrub through this and preview it just the same as if I were in Cinema 4D looking at this file. And if I delete the Cineware effect, it's going to be frozen on that frame. You need this effect in order for it to actually update and give you access to more options. So let's take a look at these controls. First of all, there's a banner for Cineware. I'm just gonna close that up. We have Cineware help, which is just a shortcut to the help file for Cineware to get any questions that you have answered. And before we jump into anything else, I wanna point out that there's an options box right here, which allows you to choose which Cinema 4D installation you want to use. I have mine pointed to my full version of R25, but you can change this to any version that's on your computer. If you don't have a Maxon subscription, then yours is probably set to Cinema 4D Lite. Now let's take a look at what controls we have. First of all, there's this live link button. If I click enable, this is going to open up the same project file in Cinema 4D and synchronize this playhead in Cinema 4D with After Effects. So I just moved to frame 18. If I jump back to After Effects, I'm on frame 18 again. It doesn't work the other way around. If I go to frame seven and back to Cinema 4D, that's not linked. It's a one-way link between Cinema 4D and then After Effects. This is mostly useful if you're trying to do a little bit of compositing in After Effects or maybe color correction before you're actually rendering out of Cinema 4D, but that's about the extent of its usefulness. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable that. And then we'll look at the render settings. The first option is renderer. So choosing how this is being rendered. It's defaulted to viewport draft, which like I said, is very similar to what I see inside of Cinema 4D with the grid overlays, lower quality render settings so that it renders more quickly. I'm viewing this at quarter resolution, but I could change it up to full. It would take a little bit longer to render, but it still does a pretty good job of showing me that fast preview. We could change this from viewport draft to just viewport, and then those overlays are going to disappear. That's pretty much the only difference. Then we have current draft, and what this is going to do depends on what version of Cinema 4D you're using. If you're using Cinema 4D Lite, then you only have access to the standard renderer, and that's how it's going to give you a render. It's a draft view of the standard renderer. Since I'm using a full version of Cinema 4D, and my project file was set up to use the physical renderer, it's using the physical renderer here. But still a draft view, which is why I'm getting all of these silhouetted objects on top of my background. It's not a full preview. Now I could change this to current and it will take off the draft and start to render whatever frame I'm on. Unfortunately, there's really no progress bar available to view how much is being rendered or how far along in that render preview After Effects actually is. So I could be sitting here for minutes at a time if my render settings are set too high before I see anything update. If I jump back into Cinema 4D and just render this frame, you'll see how long it takes. It's not just an instant preview, and these are very low render quality settings. Physical render is just not a fast renderer. The benefit of doing this in Cinema 4D is that I can actually tell what part of the frame it's working on and see the progress. In After Effects, we do not have that benefit. So I'm not gonna use current as my renderer. I'm gonna change that back to viewport draft. And then look at the display controls. We have current shading as the default, but wireframe just gives me a wireframe view of my scene or box to simplify it even further. Instead of showing me accurate geometry, it's just going to draw a box around each model. Now those two options are only visible on viewport draft and viewport, not on current draft or current. I'm gonna change that back to viewport draft and set my display back to current shading. And then the next checkbox is no textures slash shader. I can check that on to speed up the render time because it's not calculating any of those textures. It's just taking into account the lighting basically. Check that off, and the next option is no pre-calculation. This is really only beneficial if you're using things 
like dynamics or particle simulations. It's disabling any of the pre-calculations that happen when generating those dynamics or particles. You're not gonna want that on for a final render, but in reality, you really don't wanna be rendering out of After Effects unless you're only using Cinema 4D Lite. That's your only option if you're using Cinema 4D Lite. I'll uncheck that, and the next checkbox is Keep Textures in RAM. This will enable After Effects's cache and will potentially speed up your rendering inside of After Effects. So with that check, it's going to cache all of those textures into my RAM and allow this to play back a little bit more quickly. The next option is Render Server, and we can only click on a button which says Purge Memory. You pretty much only wanna do this if you're noticing that things are really slowing down because over time that can fill up. So just click that to purge it. All right, that's it for Render Settings. Next up is Project Settings. The first option is Camera. This is where we can choose whether or not we wanna use the camera that was in Cinema 4D or a different option. So Cinema 4D Camera chooses the camera that was by default selected in Cinema 4D. I only have one camera in here, so that's the only camera it's going to choose. But if I had multiple cameras in my Cinema 4D scene, I could change this to select Cinema 4D camera, say set camera, and then choose from this dropdown any camera that's in my scene. Now again, since I only have one, that's the only option. So I'll cancel out of that, and we'll take a look at the next option, which is centered comp camera. If I click on that, then it's going to look for a camera in this comp. So I'm gonna to go to layer new camera, and just leave it at defaults, maybe change this to 50 millimeters and click OK. And immediately my scene has changed quite a bit. And that's because the camera I used in Cinema 4D was a much wider angle lens than what I have in After Effects. But I can zoom in interactively just like any other 3D object in After Effects. So let me just reposition my camera a little bit. This is a little difficult since I have to wait for this to update, but maybe I'll just change this back down to quarter so that it renders more quickly. And there we go, I'm able to pan my camera in wherever I'd like, and I can move this camera around. If I set the point of interest to zero, then it should rotate right around the center of my Cinema 4D scene. So this is a really cool feature. You're able to navigate your Cinema 4D 3D scene using After Effects 3D workflow. Now, if I were to instead have chose comp camera instead of centered comp camera, then everything's going to shift around. And I can't really think of a scenario where you would ever want to use the standard comp camera over the centered comp camera, because what the centered comp camera is doing is taking the coordinates of Cinema 4D, where the origin is 0, 0, 0, and normalizing that position to After Effects coordinate system, where the 3D origin is usually half of the comp's width and height, which is why I say that you should really just go with centered comp camera. The next option is Set Take. This allows you to use the takes system from Cinema 4D. So if you've set up multiple takes in Cinema 4D, you can set the take, and in this dropdown, it will give you the ability to choose any one of those. So I have one set up as a depth pass. If I click OK, it's going to take a minute to update, but now we're looking at that take. Now I use that take specifically for generating a depth pass. That's why it looks a little bit flatter, but it rendered much more quickly that way but you can use takes to modify basically any property in Cinema 4D and have a separate version of the same scene. I'm gonna undo that back to where we were. And the next option is Cinema 4D Layers. This is just a checkbox. If I check it on, it's going to give me another button to set layers, and this allows you to access the layers system in Cinema 4D. So I've set up all of these layers inside Cinema 4D, so if I wanted to take off the lights in the camera, I could do that and it's going to take a minute to update, but now all of my lights are gone. Or I could maybe leave that on and take the heart off, and then I'm left with just the bricks and the background. So that's a very useful feature for being able to break out things into individual layers inside of After Effects. I'm gonna uncheck that and close up project settings, and the next section is multi-pass linear workflow. This is actually only available if you're using the standard renderer. So what I'm gonna do is jump back into Cinema 4D and change my renderer to standard and enable the multi-pass checkbox right there. And then I can add as many as I'd like. So I'm just gonna go to multi-pass and say add all image layers. That will enable each one of those and I'll save my project file. Then jump back into After Effects and reload this Cinema 4D file. It looks like After Effects is automatically refreshing it for me because it's a little hung up for a second here and then jump back up to my render settings and change this to current draft. These options are not gonna be available unless you're looking at one of the current versions. So if I change it to current, it should render a little bit more quickly than before since I'm using the standard renderer instead of the physical renderer. 
And there we go, it only took about five seconds to update. Still not ideal, but at least I can see it. Now I can choose Cinema 4D Multipass and check that on. Click the Set Multipass button and then choose one of my passes. So if I only wanted the Diffuse Pass, I could click OK. Again, it will take a few seconds to render that frame, but now I see just the Diffuse. Now the way that I set this up was to use the Reflectance channel. So I'm going to go to my Reflection, click OK, and that is what will texture all of my Lego bricks. So again, I'll let a few seconds go by so that it updates, and there are all of my textures. Now I'm only viewing that pass. And to properly work in this linear workflow, I really need to go to my project settings and make sure that I'm working in 32 bits per channel and linearizing my workspace. Then I will get more accurate colors in this multi-pass view with the trade-off of now needing to do some color correction and modification to work in this linear workflow. The next checkbox is defined multi-passes. And what that does is allows you to have the multi-passes that you've added in this scene. I only added the image layers, but you can also have material layers and custom passes. So that checkbox is what would allow you to set those custom passes. Add image layers is going to bring every single one of those passes into your scene with their correct layer order and blend mode settings to reproduce the final RGBA image. This will take significantly longer to render because it has to render each pass individually. But again, this would allow you to work inside of After Effects, modifying your composite a bit before you've done any kind of rendering out of Cinema 4D. The trade-off is, once again, we don't really have any indication as to how far through this render we've actually progressed. You just have to sit here until the frame is finished rendering. As you can see, that took 61 seconds, not at all ideal, especially without a progress indicator. In Cinema 4D, if I render this, I'm at least given this visual cue as to what part of the frame is being rendered. You don't get that in After Effects. So I'm gonna undo back to my standard view, and actually I'm just gonna keep undoing until we get back to before I switched my project to 32 bits per channel. Collapse up the multi-pass option, and then go into the commands, and this is actually one of my favorite and most used features of Cineware. With any Cinema 4D project file that you bring in, you can click on Extract Cinema 4D Scene Data. And when I do that, it's going to bring in the lights from my scene, any cameras that were being used, and if you've set up external compositing tags, even null objects or solids in place of where they were in the scene in Cinema 4D. And this can be extremely useful. So actually, let me undo jump into Cinema 4D and grab my heart, and I'll just add a tag, go to the Render Tags, and choose External Compositing. With that on, I'll just save my project file, go back to After Effects, and let this update. It'll take a second, but there we go, it's refreshed. Now I can click on Extract, and not only does it bring in those lights and camera, but I also have a null object, complete with animation keyframes, exactly where that heart was. Let me change this back to Viewport Draft. And we can see that null object is perfectly paired up with my heart. So I could add anything in 3D now and align it to that model. So I could just add in some text that says Lego, maybe make it white so it's a little easier to see. Turn on that 3D switch, click and drag the parent pick whip while holding shift and let go on that null object. Looks like it's really big, so I'll just scale that text size down as well as the layer itself and then bring it out just a little bit, but now this is going to be attached to that LEGO model. Very cool and extremely useful for compositing once you've actually rendered something out of Cinema 4D and need to put some more elements into the scene while preserving that 3D data. But those are all the controls you have in the Cineware effect, and to be honest, that single extract button is what I come to this effect for 99.9% .9 of the time. I just import my Cinema 4D project file, click on extract to get that scene data, and then generally just remove the project file altogether. I won't need it because I've rendered out my animation through Cinema 4D and just brought it in as an image sequence here in After Effects. But I don't wanna make it sound useless. That one feature is essential to my Cinema 4D to After Effects workflow. But that's all you need to know about the Cineware effect. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.